Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now way back before I got into PC gaming, the PlayStation 3 was my method of choice for enjoying all of my favourite games. The free online play, console exclusives and the overall futuristic look of the thing were what made me buy it. Well, actually, I asked my mum to buy it, but that's besides the point. Now, at the time, this thing cost quite the premium, with games being fairly expensive too. I would spend hours playing Modern Warfare 2, GTA 4, and because this is the sought-after 60GB backwards compatible version, I would play all the PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 games as well. I must have played GTA San Andreas every weekend for about two years. These days though, you won't find new AAA titles coming to this system, but that doesn't mean you can't have fun. The prices of these have dropped significantly, and you can find one for as little as about $80 or pounds on sites like Amazon, and that got me thinking. If you're looking to play a few games on the cheap, or you've got some cash burning a hole in your pocket, then should you buy an old PlayStation 3, or can you find a PC that is just as capable for the same price, or even cheaper. So let's talk about the specifications. Now the PlayStation 3 has a 3.2 GHz single core cell processor, 256 MB of RAM and 256 MB of VRAM to put it simply. It also has a GPU clocked at 550 MHz which I believe is comparable to the 7800 GTX from Nvidia. Now if we built a PC with a 7800 GTX in it, we wouldn't be able to run much at all, so the PlayStation 3 has incredible optimization on its side. Most games on this system run at 720p with a target of 30 frames per second, so that's the goal we had in mind for our PC. If it can hit at least 30 frames per second with 720p resolution, then we'll be happy. So let's get into our PC build. Now we bought an old decommissioned HP system but we swapped out the case for a spare we had lying around. You may recognise it from a few videos back and the reason was because the side door kept falling off the HP case. But don't worry this isn't a common feature when buying old systems, just bad luck on this occasion. I believe when on a budget that this is the way to go, there are so many pre-built systems on eBay that go for such good money and building one for less would be a struggle. This cost £40 or $48. We'll factor in the cost that our spare case cost us as well back when we bought that which was £8 or around $10. Now our PC features a Core 2 Quad Q8200, 4GB of DDR3 RAM and a 250GB SATA hard drive. Not bad. So with our total up to £48 or $50, it was time to add a graphics card as ours didn't come with one included. Now this is always the hardest part but after typing graphics card in eBay and choosing ending soonest we found this. The Asus GT640 with just 11 bids are the winning one at £18 which is around $22. So that's it, a whole PC for £56 or $72, not bad at all. Windows 7 was also installed on the PC when we bought it and we picked up a keyboard and mouse combo for £3 which is about $3.50. Now for our output we decided to use a television as it's likely you've got one of these already but bear in mind if you wanted a monitor then you can get those second hand for next to no money at all. £59 or $75.50 later and it was time to test some games and fire this thing up. So let's get into it. Now remember we have to hit 30 frames per second at 720p for this to be a success. We'll also try to get the games to look similar to the PS3 versions to make it more fair as well. So first up it's Grand Theft Auto 5. Now here it is on the PS3. It looks okay. There's jaggies all over the place but overall it's graphically quite impressive. Over on our PC we put everything on normal settings with the advanced settings off and FXAA on to eliminate those edges and the game I would say looks just as good if not better than the PlayStation 3 version with around 32 frames per second on average in the city 
and just a little bit higher in the desert. So overall, GTA 5 is a success. The PS3 version does suffer from a few frame drops, and so does our PC, but overall this isn't a bad result. So next up we have the Elder Scrolls Skyrim. This is the original version, not the remastered version that came out yesterday. This is one of my favourite games and it runs okay on the PS3 with what looks like medium PC settings, maybe a little bit lower when it comes to the textures and it features a few frame drops that are quite noticeable as well. Over on our PC we decided to be brave and opt for 1080p which actually worked out to be quite a wise decision even with the high preset at full HD we hit 35 frames per second on average blowing the PS3 out of the water. So let's try a little bit more demanding. Now sometimes I forget that this came out on last gen consoles but nevertheless it does look quite good. It just doesn't really run that good, but never mind, because let's see how our budget PC does. We're on to a winner with the medium settings, and we managed to average 33 frames per second. The foliage looks much better, and there aren't as many slowdowns or sudden lag spikes as there are on the PS3 version, and overall I'm fairly happy with the result. Finally, Fallout New Vegas. Our PS3 could handle it quite nicely, and I remember this, that when I first played Fallout New Vegas on the PlayStation 3, the jagged lines, or lack of anti-aliasing, really were quite distracting. Um, over on our PC, we cranked it up again to full HD 1080p, and saw a nice 50 to 60 frames per second on average, which gives us another win for our PC. So I'm going to leave the tests there and talk a little bit about the positives and negatives of each one. Now the PlayStation 3, whilst it didn't perform as well, does have some awesome exclusives and it's just easier to set up and play. Having said that, you won't be able to play the newest games though as they just don't make them for it anymore and although our PC may not be able to either, at least you can try and you can even upgrade it further down the line should you want to spend a little bit more money on it as well. Now the point of this video wasn't to start an argument about which is better and why, I just thought it would be very interesting to compare this ageing console to a fairly cheap PC and hopefully help any of you gamers out there that have a very very limited budget and just want to have some fun. Whilst I was actually quite surprised with the performance of this old and cheap PC and I would definitely recommend this over Sony's old console, if you're looking for a quick $80 gaming fix with limited setup time then the PlayStation 3 will still provide you with hours of fun. It is always interesting to take a look back and I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, it's been a little bit different. so. Yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, hit that like button. If you didn't really like it all that much, click dislike. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Leave your thoughts down below in the comments of what you think about this old PC setup. And if you'd like to see it tested perhaps against the PlayStation 4, let me know down there as well. Thank you all so much for watching and hopefully I'll see every single one of you in the next one.